Humans and aliens live together on the Earth. This demand are transporting a stowaway, whose clothes are cut open to reveal an alien with a mask of a human head. There are other living things in the universe besides humans. The alien is a escape criminal, and the two are about to take him back when a policeman runs over. The alien pushed away an old agent to escape, and the old agent was about to attack when his hand lost control. In a desperate moment, Agent K attacked the aliens, saving the policeman's life. But the policeman, who had never seen an alien before, was shocked. Another policeman came. K pulled out the memory erase stick, and a flash of red light erased the cop's memory. That's another function of men in black, to erase the intermittent memories of ordinary people. The cleanup team arrived and removed any trace of the alien presence. The old agent felt guilty because he almost failed in his mission. He thought he was getting old. It was time to retire, and Kay needed a new partner. At the same time, Jay is hunting a fugitive. The fugitive is so strong that he can not only jump directly off the bridge, but also climb the wall to the roof with his bare hands. But he is still blocked by Jay. They thought they could bring him back this time, but he was an outlaw. He just said, that the world was going to end, jumped off the building, and Jay was stunned. The leader thinks that the prisoner jumped because of Jay. Jay how to explain that they do not believe. Only when the medical examiner finds something unusual during the autopsy, he will believe him after telling the leader. At this time, Kay also found the police station, and he asked Jay to help identify the criminal's weapons. When Kay arrived at a store, he asked the owner to take out his weapon. The owner tried to play dumb, and Kay shot him, but the owner's head grew back. He's an alien. Now the owner was honest and immediately displayed his collection of alien weapons. Jay instantly recognizes the criminal's weapon and learns that the criminal is also an alien. After Jay helped Kay identify the weapon, he erased his memory. Kay's partner is retired and he thinks Jay can be his partner. Kay gave him a card and told him to come to him tomorrow. The man pulled his scalp, nearly ripped off his face, and scared the woman unconscious. That night, a flying saucer fell from the sky. The man went out to look and saw a huge pit appear in front of his door. Before he could shoot, he was dragged down, turned into a skin, and the aliens took his skin. The next day, an exterminator came to clean up the cockroaches and heard the exterminator say that the cockroaches were pests. The man was so mad, he killed the exterminator and used his car to carry the UFO. He's the alien cockroach man. At this time, Jay also came to the address K gave him and they took the exam together. Are the best in the army. When the game started, they couldn't ride on their legs. When Jay found out, he pulled the table directly in front of him. In the second level, the others picked up their pistols and shot the aliens. Only Jay hit a little girl. The examiner asks him why and Jay explains that none of his aliens are a threat. A little girl with a book on quantum mechanics is not afraid to walk among the aliens, so she poses the greatest threat. In this way, Jay successfully passed the examination. Kay takes Jay to the headquarters of Sector 6, where there are various aliens, to twin aliens, who monitor all alien activities on Earth. Kay erased Jay's fingerprints and information, and Jay officially joined the men in black organization and became an agent. His first assignment was to check on the octopus man. They're about to leave Earth in violation of regulations. After they arrived, they found that the octopus man's wife was about to give birth, and Jay also helped the alien to deliver. Successfully delivered a small alien octopus, Kay realized that something big had to happen for the octopus to leave with his wife who was about to give birth. On the other side of the alien, cockroach came to a restaurant. He pretended to be a waiter, directly killed the prince of the Jajalan Empire, grabbed the table and ran away. When he opened it, it was full of diamonds, but this was not what he was looking for. K and J arrive at a farm, and after testing the soil, K finds traces of aliens here. If they invade Earth, they will face a catastrophe. They came to the morgue to examine the prince's body. When the man touched his ear, the face of the corpse opened automatically, and the little alien inside was the alien prince. The prince told them to find the galaxy, and then died. They went to the prince's jewelry store and found the galaxy the prince had said was on the pet cat's collar. That's when Jay saw the cockroach man. He was here and he found out the secret. Jay tried to put a bullet in him, but the recoil was so strong. It sent him flying. He looked back and the cockroach man had fled. He went to the autopsy room and grabbed the coroner. At this time, Jay, they also arrived. The medical examiner to Jay for help. Jay thought she was seducing himself. So the cat jumped on the prince's body. Hiding below the cockroach man grabbed the cat, grabbed the collar and jumped out of the window with the medical examiner, and it just swallowed the pendant. Back at headquarters, the Empire demands that they hand over the galaxy or they will attack Earth. He reminded them that there were the real flying saucers in the UFO gallery. Jay guessed the cockroach man would be looking for transportation here. They went to the museum at once. Kay's car can change shape and run right up the tunnel. Avoiding traffic, the cockroach man arrives. He leaves the forensics aside, starts the saucer, and is about to go home. Jay and Kay take up arms together 
and shoot the UFO down to the ground. The cockroach man who failed to escape was very angry and directly tore off the skin and revealed his true face. Jay looked at the giant cockroach in front of him and was stunned. Cockroaches swallow their guns in one gulp. K asks Jay to stop the cockroach man from boarding the flying saucer to escape and is directly in by the cockroach man. The cockroach man turned and left and Jay tried everything to stop him. However, the cockroach ignored him and tossed him off easily. Then Jay noticed some small cockroaches nearby. He deliberately stomped on the big roaches right in front of them. This time, the cockroach finally got angry and came back to kill Jay. Then his body exploded. It was Kay who found the weapon in his stomach and took the orb containing the galaxy. They think they're done, but the giant cockroach isn't dead yet. The cockroach man is about to attack. The medical examiner attacks and kills him completely, and the Earth is safe again. Having done all this, K also decided to retire. J raised his memory and invited the M.E. to join the man in black. A flower came out of the sewer, and the man thought it was just an ordinary plant, and kept tucking at it. Suddenly, the ground began to shake, and the next second, the man was directly knocked up, and it turned out to be an alien bug. Even K went down with it. He jumped on top of the bug, ready to give him an anesthetic. It didn't work, and it made the bug even angrier, throwing him into the subway. It bites the car. The subway is going to be eaten. It pulled out his gun, and the bug chicken out and backed away. After he erased the crowd's memories, Jay fired his partner and erased his memories. A man in black is not a man in black. At the same time, a giant spaceship lands on Earth, and a flower bug falls out of it. It sees a picture of a model in a magazine, and the next second, he changes into the appearance of this beautiful woman, who turns out to be the evil alien with Selena. In order to find the light of Setter, who could rule the universe, she sought out the two-headed man. After she gets information from them, she goes to a pizzeria and threatens the owner to hand over the light of Setter. The boss refused to talk, and Selena cut him in half, so she decided to search for clues alone. All this is seen by Laura hiding in the kitchen, back at the men in Black Headquarters. Because he had recently fired to many partners, no one dared to work with him. Since he couldn't work with people, he worked with dogs, and Frank became his new partner. Their first task was to investigate the pizzeria. As a witness, Laura was very calm when she answered Jay's questions. Jay develops a crush on the girl and ends up not clearing her memory. He arrived at the landing site and contacted headquarters. He learned it, that Selena had come to Earth to find the light of Saturn, and Jay told him that the light of Saturn was no longer on Earth. It turned out that 25 years ago, the Saturn people came to the Earth with the light of Saturn, seeking the refuge of the man in black, and it was Jay's old partner, Kay, who dealt with the matter. In order to find out the truth, Jay finds the post office where his old partner works. He's been wiped clean since he quit the men in black. He sees his former partner, but he doesn't recognize them. The man is an ordinary post office employee, but his colleagues are all aliens. In order for Jay to believe his story, he had to let the other employees show their true colors. It turns out they are all aliens, lurking in the post office to protect the retired K. Because of curiosity, K agreed to go back to headquarters with Jay, and this time he was just like Jay when he first came to headquarters. Curious about everything he saw, he almost destroyed the alien home with one touch. Jay gives him a mini gun as a weapon and is about to restore Kay's memory when Selena breaks into the headquarters and takes control of everyone. The headquarters immediately entered a state of complete lockdown. The room opened the emergency escape system. Two people were also rushed out. The machines at headquarters are dead, and we'll have to find another way to recover our memories. They came to the pawn shop, and after the alien operation, he almost knocked out the power in the whole city, and Kay was very tired of him. However, the memory did not recover at all, and he suddenly felt that he had been cheated. So he left angrily. He just walked out of the store, saw a familiar scene on the street, and suddenly the memory came back, and suddenly remembered everything. Meanwhile, the aliens sent by Selena have arrived, and are being beaten by them. She kills the alien with a few shots, and escapes with Jay. Although he recovered most of his memories, he was able to erase them, in order to protect Earth from the bad guys finding the light of Saturn. When they re-entered the pizzeria, the photos on the wall led them to a key. He was placed in an alien home for Laura's protection. They arrive at the station and use the key to open the locker, which is filled with a group of many aliens. Under their guidance, he took out a watch and a storage card for renting a video. The countdown on the watch said they had an hour left. However, they do not know what will happen when the countdown ends, only to come to the video store on the deposit card. Through the videotape, Kay finally recalls the events of 25 years ago. It turns out that it did not send the light of the satyr away, but put it in Laura's hand. They rushed to find Laura, but they were delayed. She had already been taken. The family was watching TV when the men dressed in black burst into the house. They turned a switch on the wall and it opened, revealing an arsenal of weapons. They were dumbfounded. 
When they're ready, the family's memory is erased. They went back to headquarters, and Jay fired at the gate, and a huge suction sucked them right in. Before they could get out of the elevator, the robot inside started shooting. Fortunately, they were prepared and escaped by hiding on the elevator. Kay covers for Jay to rescue Laura, but he is caught by Selena and Jay is stopped by an alien. The alien took off his cloak, and there were three nesting aliens inside, with Laura's ship about to take off. Jay has no time to tangle with the aliens, so he kills them instantly and saves Laura before the ship can launch. Selena is about to kill Kay when she doesn't notice Jay standing behind her. Jay killed Selena with one shot. They take Laura to the launch site, and it turns out that Laura is not wearing the light of Saturn, but a location if the bracelet is not sent out of the Earth. Before the countdown on the watch ends, it will automatically explode and destroy the Earth. When Selena catches up, Kay presses the button and the car turns into a spaceship. They drive to the underpass, where Selena chases after them, only to be devoured by the waiting alien monster. When they arrived at the launch site, Kay told them the truth. It turns out that Laura is the light of Saturn, and it must return to his home planet immediately, or Earth will be destroyed. Laura's ship has just taken off when a giant alien bug suddenly appears. Selena absorbs his energy, becomes huge and wants to go after Laura's ship while Jay and Kay fire at the same time. Selena becomes a firework in the air, and Laura successfully leaves the Earth. After the Earth crisis was successfully resolved, they return to headquarters. Kay opens the door of a storage locker, and Jay sees a larger alien being. It turns out that humans are also a small alien in the storage locker. The woman carried a cake to the prison on the moon. It holds the most feared criminal in the solar system, Boris the Beast. He asked the guards to cut the cake, and the guards deliberately inserted their fingers into the cake in an attempt to provoke Boris. The next, an alien bug crawl onto his hand, and two prison guards were shot dead on the spot. The bug opened Boris's handcuffs and got into his palm. Turns out Boris is an alien, and the bug is just part of his body. The guards tried to stop him, but humans are vulnerable to absolute power. Boris simply blew the prison apart, knocking all the guards out of space. The outstretched claws of his feet gripped the ground and the woman who had helped him escape was sucked up. But after he escaped from the moon prison, he only wanted to find the man who had captured him. Meanwhile, Kay and Jay investigate the ship that landed downtown. Kay receives a call from the headquarters that there are humans infected with alien roundworms by eating fish and wants them to investigate the to go to the back of the restaurant where they see forbidden alien ingredients. Kay beat the boss to show his true face. He pressed the boss to sell the fish to home. However, the boss was afraid and refused to answer the question and invited them to dinner as an apology. The two are eating noodles and Kay observes the restaurant and discovers something is wrong. Then the headquarters calls and Kay has guessed that the ship that landed is Boris's. Sure enough, all the people sitting in the restaurant are alien killers sent by Boris. A scuffle broke out under the cover of Jay. Kay comes to the kitchen to check, but the boss has been killed. Kay immediately went to the top floor, but Boris shot down the gun. Jay escapes an alien and goes to the top floor, just in time to meet Boris, who is about to attack Kay, and the steel door is just in front of Boris's spikes. However, the attack was so fierce that they could not resist, and they had to retreat, and eventually escaped by falling off the roof. Jay asks Kay for information about Boris, hoping to help him catch Boris, but Kay refused Jay decided to find out the matter himself. He came to the headquarters to inquire about the news. The system told him that the level was not enough. The next day, he came to Kay's house, but the door was opened by a woman and said that he did not know Kay. Kay arrives at headquarters again, but everyone is unaware of Kay's existence. Turns out, according to the file, Kay was already dead in the line of duty 40 years ago when he captured Boris. Then it became clear that Boris had traveled back 40 years and killed Kay ahead of schedule. At this time, the system warns that aliens are attacking the Earth. Kay is now killed by Boris in advance, and the A-Network defense system he installed in the year is also missing. He stops the alien attack and must travel back 40 years to save Kay. Jay finds the time machine and Boris's time, and he decides to go back in time to save Kay and save Earth. The man stood on the roof took a deep breath and jumped. However, he did not die and traveled to the Jurassic Age. The scene in front of him gradually changed, and Jay was pulled back to the roof a second before he fell to the ground. Everything in front of him looked exactly the same. Yet he had arrived 40 years earlier. According to the files, Boris is going to kill a prophet today and steal the Anet system. Jay immediately rushes to the amusement park mentioned in the file. Arrives at the prophet as being killed. Jay immediately scans Boris. At this time, the young Kay appeared, and Jay hugged him excitedly. Young Kay, who does not know Jay, attacks him directly. When he woke up, Kay had taken him back to the men in black headquarters. He asked Jay where he came from, and he made it up. Kay tricked him into taking him to check, but Jay immediately recognized the machine as a wing eliminator. 
The wing is about to disappear, and Jay has to warn Kate to make sure he kills Boris when he sees him tomorrow, not understanding what he meant. He stopped the instrument. Jay finally tells him the truth and tells him that he must find the in-network defense system. Following the last words of a prophet, they went to a bowling alley. However, it is too late. The boss has been killed by Boris. When they see a magazine, they immediately conclude that this is Boris's next target. They arrive at the party and find an alien named Griffin, who has the ability to predict the future. Griffin's planet has been overrun by Boris's people, so they have a cyber defense system. Griffin then predicted that Boris would be here soon. As soon as he said that, Boris rushed into the meeting. After all the chaos, Griffin has fled, and Jay fails to eliminate Boris. They go to the restaurant for a late night snack. When Jay suddenly remembers talking to Griffin earlier, he mentioned a baseball game, they came to the stadium and saw Griffin. Griffin showed them the game three months later, and they enjoyed it. Boris pops up and grabs Griffin. They finally find Griffin, and Boris takes him, so they chase him out. Not only did he miss Boris, he wrecked the car. As soon as the man pressed the remote control, the destroyed car rose slowly. He pulled out a circular motorcycle from under the car, and they mounted the motorcycle and raced after it. With Jay covering him, K manages to rescue Griffin. Boris's tires were blown out by a bullet, and he took the opportunity to escape. Now, that Boris has traveled for years into the future. He finds young Boris. They met to perform a self-scold themselves. And finally, they decided to join forces to kill Kay. At this time, Kay also got a network defense system. Griffin told him that the system had to be launched into space to activate it. And the moon rocket launch was scheduled for tomorrow. They hurried to the launch base, but were mistaken for spice, arrested and sent to the general. The general did not believe them. It was then that Griffin used his powers to show the general what was to come. The general decides to help them, and he makes it to the launch pad with Jay and K. By this time, the DeBoris had arrived. Old Boris pulls Jay out of the elevator, crushing his pistol, while young Boris stops K, seeing K about to be shot by Boris again. Jay suddenly has an idea. He writes down the time on his watch, sets the time shuttle, and makes a mockery of Boris. Sure enough, Boris stopped, and the spike shot straight at Jay, not nervous at all. Jay took the attack, and jumped off with old Boris in his arms, then pressed the shuttle, and instantly they're both back to a minute ago. This time, Jay has memorized the attack path and easily dodges all the spikes, knocking Boris down with one punch, while Kay also breaks the condensate pipe. Then another shot, and young Boris fell, the tomato to the rocket, placed the defense system on top of the rocket, and returned safely to the ground. Old Boris was incinerated by the flames. Once in space, the defense system was successfully activated. Wrapping the earth around it, young Boris suddenly appears, and the general is killed when he fends off Boris's attack. Then Kay remembered what he had said before, and instead of arresting Boris, he killed him. Just then the general's son came along with a pocket watch in his hand. Jay was stunned when he saw it. He also had the pocket watch. It turned out that Jay was the general's son. It's just that the little boy was erased by Kay, so it didn't remember seeing Kay before. Jay goes back for years and sees the familiar K again as if nothing had happened it's a beating crystal the woman picks it up the next second it glows and changes it turned out to be an alien weapon with a blue star embedded in it with only one tenth of a millimeter of power a pillar of blue light shot out of the desert and was blasted through the sky this woman's name is Molly when she was a child a talon broke into her home when the black organization got wind of the break-in they came to capture it and wiped her parents memories Molly, who was hiding upstairs, saw this and helped the Talon escape. To thank her, the Talon promised to repay her later and jumped out of the window. Molly's experiences as a child made her interested in aliens and aspired to join the Men in Black organization. An accidental breaking gave her the opportunity to track the Men in Black. When she arrived at the headquarters, the supervisor wanted to erase her memory, but after seeing Molly's excellent performance, he decided to accept her. Molly became a trainee agent and wore a Men in Black uniform. She got on a train to London, and as soon as she Saturday down, the worn-out train began to transform, and the train instantly became a high-tech station. In just three minutes, the train arrived in London, on the other side of the world. When she got off the train, she saw all kinds of aliens. She'd never seen so many. Then a man walked by, Peter, the most powerful agent in London. Molly's first assignment is to work with Peter to protect the Gabby and Vanger. And before they knew it, just a few hours earlier, two aliens had arrived on Earth. They killed a janitor and took his form. They went to the alien grocery store and got the poison from the queen of the fairies. Peter and Molly came to Vanger's party and Vanger was happy to see his old friend. Vanger is so happy to see his old friends that they don't realize that the killers have entered. They shoot the poison needles at Vanger, who is instantly dizzy, but Peter thinks he's just drunk. They had just put Vanger in the car and were about to leave when suddenly the car exploded and the Dragon Star's assassins reappeared. They were on the ground and their eyes glowed blue 
The two men clapped their hands together, and a way formed on the ground, rushing straight towards the two men. Peter immediately took out his weapon to fight back, but the aliens' bodies recovered immediately after the attack. Peter continued his attack, and Molly came to venture under his cover. Molly comes to Venture's side under his cover, and Venture hands her a stone and dies instantly. The men in black team finally arrived. The alien killer saw the situation was bad and escaped with the escape technique. When they returned to the headquarters, they found out about the killers. It turns out they are from Gemini Planet, which has been attacked by the Wind Beast, and all the aliens have been assimilated by the Wind Beast. They don't know why the Wind Beast wants to kill Venture. They went to the alien grocery store and found that the Queen of Andromeda had been killed long ago and only one pawn was left alive. And the pawn saw Molly and took her as the new queen. They are surrounded by their colleagues. Just after they come out of the grocery store, and it turns out that they found out that Venture gave Molly a crystal before he died. Peter found an alien motorcycle in order to escape, but Molly met the Dragon Planet killer when she was escaping. Peter arrives in time and pulls the motorcycle into the sky. When the motorcycle flew over the water, it stopped. But then the men in black surrounded them again. Peter accelerated once again to open the FTL mode. This time, they directly across the fall into the desert. At that moment, Molly realized that the crystals were vibrating. She just picked it up and the crystal turned into an alien weapon, with a blue giant star hidden in the center of the weapon. Molly turns the power down and tries to fire it, and the desert is blasted straight out of a deep ditch. When they are surprised, a small alien comes out from the motorcycle's water cup. It turns out that Peter's ex-girlfriend, Risa, is an alien arms dealer, and this alien was sent by him. The alien stole the crystals and flew away immediately. In order to prevent the weapon from falling into the hands of the enemy, they hurriedly repaired the motorcycle and came to Risa's house. Knowing his ex-girlfriend's preferences, Peter gave Risa a small soldier as a gift as bait. The elf cuts the glass and walks out softly. The next moment, the glass breaks, the sound of the glass attracts Risa's attention, and Molly takes the opportunity to steal the crystals. Just as she turned to leave, Risa spotted her. That two of them fought, and just when Molly thought she was about to win, Risa reached out with her third hand and knocked Molly down, and Peter was tied up by Risa's men. When they were about to be killed, Molly suddenly recognized the alien in front of her. He was the Talon Beast that Molly let go 20 years ago. The Talon Beast looks at the woman in front of him and remembers his promise. He immediately turned his gun to Risa and told her to hand over the crystals. They took out the crystals and were about to leave when suddenly the ground started to shake and the mountain collapsed like a liquid. It turned out to be the Sky Dragon Star Killers, who arrived to snatch the crystals. At that critical moment, the men in Black Organization also rushed over. They used new weapons to eliminate the two killers, and the crystals were also taken back to the headquarters. However, they feel that things are not so simple. They want to check the information, but found that the mission information has been deleted. When they checked the safe of the crystals, they found that the crystals had disappeared. Even Tom had disappeared. They finally realized that Tom was the mole Vanger was talking about. At this time, the Wind Beast has arrived on Earth. Peter and Molly went to the Eiffel Tower. Peter and Molly arrive at the Eiffel Tower, where Tom is. It turns out that they didn't defeat the Bee Beast, but the Bee Beast took control of Tom and erased Peter's memory. The wormhole has been opened, and Tom's body starts to change. Tom's body starts to change, and he turns into an alien octopus, which extends its tentacles and knocks Peter away. Tom is about to enter the wormhole. Peter tries to wake him up. Peter tries to wake him up, but Tom has lost his mind and chokes Peter. Molly rushes to his aid, but is knocked into the wormhole. The elf shoots a rope and pulls Molly out of the wormhole, and Tom is finally awakened by Peter. He gives the crystal to Peter, who immediately throws it to Molly. Molly transforms the crystals into a weapon, just as Link is about to go berserk. This time, he turned the power up to the maximum, and after a blue laser, the winged beasts and wormholes were instantly destroyed. The crisis of the Earth was lifted again, and Molly was successfully transformed into a real agent of the Men in Black. The story ends here.